In order to mix a custom ink color, you're going to need some tin foil to mix your ink on, a palette knife to mix, and a jar to store your ink in. You'll also need some paper towel to clean off your palette knife. To avoid contaminating all of our ink colors, you're first going to use a clean palette knife to get your ink out and put on the tin foil. You'll use this ink for um, mixing your colors and that way you don't have to worry about cleaning your palette knife every time you need to use that ink color. For my mixing, I'm going to use some red and I'm going to make coral. Um, I want sort of an orangey coral color for my print. Um, so after I'm done with the white, I need to make sure I clean my palette knife off really well. Even the edges of them will hold some different um, inks, so make sure it's cleaned off completely before you dig into another jar of ink. The color wheel will help you figure out which colors you need to mix together in order to get the color you're looking for. In this case, because I'm looking for a coral color, I need a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow to make orange and then I need the white to bring it more to a coral color. When we talk about making colors darker, we use the words tints and shades. Tints are lighter versions of a color and shades are darker. So coral would be a tint of red orange. I'm getting all of my colors set up on my tin foil palette so that I can mix them really well and get them to the right ratio. When mixing colors, you want to start with your lightest color first. So I'm going to take a little bit of white from my palette and put it on a different spot and then start working in my yellow and my red. I'm adding in my colors a little bit at a time and using my palette knife to get a smooth, even, and consistent color just by picking up my paint and um, stirring it around on my palette. Once I think I'm happy with the color that I've mixed, I'm going to get a little bit and put it on a piece of paper. Your ink will look different on the piece of paper than it does on your palette, so you want to make sure to test it out. If you're ever feeling like your color is just too bright, you should think about adding the complementary color on the color wheel. This is the color that's across from your colors on the color wheel. In my case, because I'm working with a version of orange, I might use green to tone down my color. When I'm happy with my final color, I'm going to put it in a jar and put my name and my class time on the top. And I'm going to put all of the ink that I mixed inside. I might need to make more. You'll probably want your jar to be about a third of the way full or 25% of the way full. After I finish mixing my first color, I need to pick the second color. I can either pick something that is a neutral like black to complement the color I'm using, or I can mix a custom color to go along with that color. When thinking about composition, a lot of times you might want to look at some ways to create contrast within your composition. If you originally mixed a warm color, you might think about your second color being a cool color to create some contrast. You can also use complementary colors. They make each other stand out. So blue and orange would be complementary colors. You can also use light and dark versions of colors like light, light pink and dark red. Or you can use analogous colors, which would be uh, like a yellow and an orange, but you want to create some contrast in your composition. For my print, I want to create some contrast, so I'm going to be using a hunter green as my second color. I'm going to make hunter green by using a little bit of black, a little bit of green, and a little bit of blue. That's going to make my really dark bluish green. When I'm happy with my second color, I'm going to test it out next to my first color to make sure they still look good together and that they still complement each other. When I'm happy with this color, I'm going to put it in a jar as well and save it for when I'm ready to print.